perfect. <laughs> mm. All right. So we are headed right now to pick up the homie B-Work, a talented artist, I believe born and raised in Newbury Park, California. I know that he uh, spent some time in Aurora, Colorado. B-Work has made kind of a name for himself in the 805, working with local artists like Dio Kane, Michael Pofsky, he's really in that Newbury Park, Thousand Oaks based music click. He released an album back in May, Dreams Worth Reality, which was a super dope uh, local album that I'm excited to talk to him about. But we will, um, we're gonna pick him up and we're gonna go to some spots around the 805, around Los Angeles that, that really are important to him and important to his music career. Living, brother. Tampa Living. Bay? Uh, <laughs> I saw good. you said you were bandwagon it. Yeah, dude, I'm moving to Florida. You gotta choose a better team, right? You don't wanna fuck For real. Me. What's up, my guy? It's good, How you doing, bro? Good. Like, getting a job that matters and so I can take care of my mom, take care of my brother. And like, I wanna make, I wanna make sure I can bring my family back to the coast, bro. That's my goal. Like. Fuck all the bitches, fuck all that shit. Like, all that shit's, like, important, but, like, really what's important is about bringing my family back home, and this is our home, and it's, like, it's really sad we have to leave, but on the real talk, you know, I'm trying to embrace the culture. That's why I got the Bucks hat right here. Hell yeah. Is I this got, the corner? Uh, no, no, no. So go straight, and then you're going to turn left at this light. Dude, Where it's because I used to sleep here. I'm not <laughs> even going to lie. Like, I got busted, like, a couple of times sleeping here, and now they have, like, really high security and shit, and I'm like, dude... Like, it's really not that serious. I was just <laughs> homeless. <laughs> I keep my faith on my chest. I've had this chain since, I don't know, probably since I moved here. And, you know, my mom used to be Catholic before she was Christian, and it's kind of an homage to her. And I do kind of feel like there's something out there protecting all of us, and I like to wear it around my neck. It just, I feel insecure without it. I go in the ocean with it, everything. This is this is my thing right here. All yeah, right, cool. this is the spot right here. I'll just park. So you just right like here. pull up here and like, yep. would you just like chill in your car, sleep in your car? Yeah, I'll just sleep in my car. I would make beats. I used to like literally just like plug up my like laptop all the way to my computer. And then or my, my uh, I used to plug my laptop into my car, yeah, you know, yeah. have my computer right on my lap and then just make beats right there, dude. But yeah, yeah. Happily Ever After, which is one of my favorite songs on the whole project. It was recorded um probably about two weeks after i wrote it here but happily ever after doesn't come so quick how bad do you want it better work for it you know i was writing it right here my advice to anybody is you know don't do it like this do it a little bit better and do it a little bit smarter you know i think that when you come to california and you think that oh yeah everything's gonna happen man it's gonna smack you in the face until you really learn what it has to offer and the people who are here and i think more than anything you know the industry that is underground literally you know the magazine itself i think that brought everything to my attention was like i was like oh my god i need to get on this so this spot means a lot to me you know it's mm. it's low-key it's it's kind of cool in the summer kind of cool in the summer you know the sun <laughs> still breaks it's through hot, it's hot right now yeah <laughs> it, it could definitely break through but i mean this is my um this is my place for sure I'm about a belly on my birthday ho we in underground right now my brother. Happy fucking birthday, yes, man. Hell yeah. Come on. Thank you, bro. Shout out Louise. Shout out Louise. It won't be too bad with, with only uh. Three I'm not no bitch. I'm not scared of heights. It's only if there's a lot of people on that fucking rail. <laughs> I'm only a no bitch. Brianna with Underground, we are here today with B-Work, so What's I've got up? a few questions for you. Yes. Um, how was the drive down today? Drive down was very good. We made a few wrong turns, but that's okay. Gotcha. Things happen. Yeah, life. Yeah. So uh, was there lots of traffic coming into the big LA city? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like whenever you come into LA, you're thinking about your dreams, you know what I mean? Like you see the city in the background, like look where we are right now. Like, I know, you, it's you can, so beautiful. You can see everything. So yeah, definitely looking into traffic. For sure. Yeah, very awesome. So what is your favorite studio set that's in there today? Uh, definitely the one with all the records on the wall. Because gotcha. I was like, I was like, even when we like when I first got here, I was looking, I was like, yo, like is that the Bruce Lee album right there? Like because right. I saw the Chinese, not saying it applies or anything. But right. I was like, I, I was curious. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, definitely. Fleetwood Mac one. was on there. Yeah, Fleetwood was yeah. on there. That was for sure. Mm -hmm. That's also probably pretty motivating too to see those records on there. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You're in the I mean, who doesn't know Fleetwood Mac? Like, right. For me personally, Fleetwood Mac, that her voice, like Stevie Nicks' voice, is just so iconic. And I mean, that's 
like one of the most vocally inspirational artists of all time, for sure. Yeah, super. I was actually named after one of the songs, Rhiannon. Oh, no, where my parents got my name and then shortened it. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm gonna call you Fleetwood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what can we expect from you going into the new year, 2021? What What is up for Beware? Well, I am moving to Florida. I'll gotcha. be moving at uh, the 30th, and then from there, I'm gonna try and take over there. You know what I mean? I want to bring the 805 sound. I want to bring the alien over to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely one of those things that, for me, like putting out music, obviously, but it's been very slow. That's the only thing. It's just because with COVID and everything that's happened, it's been like, what do I want to release about? And speaking on, you know, a lot of people speaking on the Breonna Taylor thing. I just didn't know if it was my place, and I wanted to be respectful gotcha. about the whole thing. Um, but there's gonna be a lot of music, a lot of like a lot of different kind of music and what I'm gonna get into is kind of deep diving into the emotions um, you know I, I just lost my dad so I kind of want to kind of write a record for people that can feel that you know gotcha. what I mean and really like find where my place is in music again Get your emotions into the music while you're performing which is a lot of things that people miss on a lot of performances but that's the biggest thing that I learned from them was how to do that um, but I got signed literally off my job at 18 I was working at finish line selling shoes and this guy comes in with his son and uh, <laughs> he's just buying up the whole store he's got a Gucci shirt on all this stuff and like he's in a full suit bro like I'm like what the hell like I have 20 shoes in each arm and I'm like I'm a twig so I'm trying to like I'm like, like using my back like trying to carry this shit and like so I'm like almost having this shit fall and I'm like you know what fuck it I throw everything on the ground and I'm like dude what do you do for a living he was like, well, actually, I own my own record company. So I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. And he, was, he was like, I told him about my mixtape. And he was like, tell you what, if my son likes you, I'll sign you on the spot. And that's what happened. I was, um, I was on that label for almost about two years. I opened for J.I. Eco. I opened for B.O.B. I did stuff for Chris Calico, Modest Yahoo. Um, I really learned how to be an artist there and like really get a taste of what that felt like when I was doing all the tours and stuff I learned the tour life what that really meant <laughs> just getting up at 7 and then the rest of the days and yours until like 10 o'clock or 11 and then it's the after parties so it's a lot of stuff it, it was a lot of hard work but that label God bless them man they taught me everything I know and I, I wish them nothing but the best fun fact the dude who did my first mixtape just got signed by them so shout out Lou, Lou Universe Shit. What is the label's name again? Big Top Entertainment. And is that do they, they so they still exist and they're signed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they sign new growing. artists. They do everything. They're based out of Colorado, and it's a division of Sony Records. When I got signed, my deal was, uh, you know, we we ended up parting ways just because I I wanted to take my sound a certain way, and um, that you know. I didn't control the music, so I, I, wanted, I just wanted to control my music. So when I when I left the label, it wasn't any animosity or anything like that. I just wanted to go about it my own way. And it was good. You're, you're still tight with them. And, and oh, yeah, absolutely. Anything I need, anything like that, they're always there. Um, within reason, obviously. You know, you, you left the label, so you leave a few things. But at the same time, I know they're always there. Family, like when I needed money on the flight back, I was so broke. Jay gave me 30 bucks. Dude, <laughs> I gotta send money, Jay. I'm sending you money like <laughs> tomorrow, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> If you die at the underground photo shoot, you're an 805 legend for life. Shit. Just push me off real quick. <laughs> bro, I wouldn't even walk down here. Yeah, me neither, honestly. That's so sus. I don't want to miss my or drop my camera. No question. No question. Step beyond the back. Uh, Underground 2020. What up? 2020. The vision is so damn clear. You dig? Mm. My left foot, and I dipped my weight like way too hard on the back. Do you think it's it's the whole entire vibe? It's the ocean? Is it? it what, what do you think it is exactly about Zuma that is so powerful? Between six and seven, these lifeguard towers, my dad, this was his favorite place to be. And when my dad, um, my dad passed away, I hadn't really come back to the beach, but this is my first time back to the beach since we spread his ashes. So you spread his ashes here? We spread his ashes in Ventura because that was the only place we could do it. But 
he wanted to be spread here. We just, you know, people would be asking, what's an urn doing at the beach? Oh, nothing. We're just dodging Corona, too. <laughs> like, you're just fucking, you're body surfing, you get dust in your mouth, you're like, yeah, like, oh, that's not that seaweed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, six and seven, these are my dad's favorite spots, and every time we would come here, you know, there'd be cuties, like, stacked all the time, so my brother would always pick this spot, and this is where I would come. Like, I would literally just be right here, kind of just posted up, writing something on my phone, just kind of looking around at the scenery and saying, you know, what inspires me, a lot of, a lot of these houses, like the ones up here, like there's one specifically, I want one day, like th there's one specifically, but yeah, man, I, I personally, this beach means a lot to me. Older. And then you um, just send it over. Overall, that I think that there's just struggles wherever you go, you know? And you can't really depict that unless you listen to the music. And I think that if you listen to the music and you meet me for the first time, yeah. you're going to understand, like, I'm not a lot like the music. Like, I'm, I'm a little shy at first when people get to first know me. Like, it takes me a while to break out of the shell. But I'm a pretty sociable guy. Well, there's another one you played that I really liked. I, don't know. I think that this underground show is just going to light up. I think it's gonna pop, you know, there's gonna be a lot of people pulling up. I think because of COVID and everything, this might actually be a silent blessing because when people finally pour in, it's gonna be like, <clears throat> like it's just a burst, you know, the wall just bursts and we're breaking through. <laughs> Yeah, I I'll took, that that I took the last that. one because it was better than the other one. Yeah, and cut them in from the rest. Let me dub it one more time. Your ad lib yeah, should be your ad lib after I dodged Zerona should be I did. <laughs> <laughs> you low key with that go. I did. I dodged Zerona. She gave me the digits, yeah, yeah, but I does her own, I did. <laughs> 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 Bitch! <laughs>